All right, so we've started planning a theme park trip and now the time has come for you to prepare your last minute things and head out the door. Head to your favorite theme park or head on your vacation that includes a theme park or multiple theme parks. So what are some last minute tips and tricks that we can implement to enjoy your day to the fullest? Stay tuned, I've got all that here for you on today's episode of the Strength Yoga and Freedom Podcast. So welcome everybody, welcome to this Strength, Yoga and Freedom podcast. I'm Justin, I'm so glad that you're here with me today, whether you're listening to this podcast or you're watching it on YouTube. This is the podcast where we use the philosophy of yoga in a very practical, very everyday way, one step at a time, to create more happiness and more joy. And But one of those ways we can create joy and happiness is visiting theme parks. Now. This is part two of our planning a theme park series, and I want to say this. At the very beginning of this season, season three, which we are now in, I had an intention, and I shared that with you uh, on on the podcast, and I also shared it with those of you who are subscribed to my weekly newsletter, which is completely free, and you can also sign up for that newsletter just by visiting the link that's in the description of the uh, episode, the show notes. It's in there. Um, all you have to do is click and, and register, and then they send you an email that you just confirm it so that you're on it. You get an email once a week, and I give you just a little slice of inspiration, motivation. It's like I'm writing to you as friends. We're just talking as friends, and we're going through this journey together. So for those of you who have already heard me say this, I'm saying it again, and if you've not, this is the first time you're gonna hear it. This season has really been designated to having a lot of fun. Um, yes, we are we are talking about topics that still are going to help us build the lives that we wanna build and create you know, those dreams that we all have and fulfill the dreams that we have and come into our inner selves and work on ourselves and work on healing and all that good stuff. But we also need to have a lot of fun while we're along the way. And I really wanted this season to be about relatability. And I love theme parks. For those of you that have been following me, you know that, I love them. And so I'm giving you these tips and tricks while weaving in some yoga philosophy so that you can have kind of the day at the theme park that's less stressful, that's less uh, turmoil. There's less turmoil, less fighting, less aggravation, less temper tantrums, because really you're going to have a lot of fun. If you're going to a theme park because you're trying to force something, don't even go, because you are not going to have any fun and you're gonna make everybody else miserable. We need to be practicing yoga while we're in the theme parks. How do we do that? It's very simple. Again, practical in everyday way. We do it because we, you know, we practice patience. We practice, uh, you know, treating others with respect in crowds. We practice letting go of things, facing our fears. We practice getting out of the comfort zone and being intentional about our day. That's how we use yoga in the theme park. You're just aware. You bring your awareness back to yourself so that you can move about the day. That's what you do in your life. That's what you do when you're at a theme park. Same goes. And I talked a little about a bit about that on the last episode. And speaking of the last episode, I gave you five big tips that you can use to start planning your trip ahead of time. If you have not listened to that episode or watched it on YouTube, I highly suggest you do because when you watch that episode, it is a kind of the precursor to this episode where we're gonna talk about what to do when you're actually like getting ready to walk out the door and when you get there and what to do while you're there. So really uh, hone in on that last episode if you haven't already and let's start leaning into this one because we got a lot to talk about. Now, we've in the as I said in the last episode we talked about all this pre-planning. Now we're getting closer to the trip and it's start, it's time to start preparing for okay, what do I need to bring with me to go? Uh, what are we going to do to work our way through the actual experience? And so five big things here in this episode for you as well that I think are really going to help you out as you're navigating your way through these theme park trips. So, it doesn't matter, remember, it does not matter where you're going when it comes to this these tips. You could be going to those multi-park theme park destination resorts like Disney. You could be going to kind of like the regional mega park that advertises the big rides and the water park and all of that. You could be going to your local traditional amusement park. But for this, for the sake of this episode, we're gonna talk about 
simplicity here of just one day in the park. What do you need to know to navigate yourself through one day? Because one day will lead to the next and lead to the next if you're going multiple days in a row. It really is the same for every day that you go as long as you know what your intention is for your day. So when it comes to like going to a, a, a mega resort style theme park uh, experience like a Disney park where there's many parks in one resort or something like that, you're going to add on some things like packing suitcases and dealing with flights and dealing with rental cars perhaps. We're going to talk about some of that stuff on another video when it comes to traveling long distances. But today we're just talking about that that day, the day of the theme park, all right? So let's get right into number one. And number one is what do you need to bring with you? And then we're gonna talk about kind of the clothes we're gonna be wearing and some of the other things that we're gonna be doing. But let's talk first about the stuff we're going to have with us. First off, this is number one, we're talking about a backpack or a fanny pack now. Now, when I use the term backpack, I wanna say this too. That could mean any bag that you're carrying, whether it's over your shoulders, whether it's the thin ropes and you just have that bag in the back that you kind of zip or tighten, whether it's backpack with multiple zippers, whether whatever it is, whether you're carrying a purse, it doesn't matter. We're talking about all bags. What are you bringing as far as a bag? The cross body bags might work for you or that fanny pack might work. I highly recommend having a bag of some sort instead of putting things in your pockets. Why? Because things are more likely to get lost when they're in your pockets, especially if you're not wearing shorts or pants that have zip pockets like cargo shorts or any other pants that have a zip up pocket. So it's really important to be sure that you have a backpack or another type of bag or a crossbody bag, fanny packs type stuff. Now let's talk about these bags. Here's the things with the thing with bags, backpacks, so on. They are really, really good if you need a lot of things with you throughout the day, or if you have small children, for example, too. But understand this: many theme parks, many, many theme parks are going to prohibit where you bring those bags when it comes to riding rides. Uh, so what I mean by that is there are a lot of theme parks that will not allow you to bring bags on a ride with you or even into the line with you. Now, the cross body bags and the fanny packs, that's a little different. More parks allow those to ride with you. You need to make sure, though, when you're looking at any of the stuff with bag policies that you check the park that you're going to. So, for example, if you have been to Cedar Point and you have been on Steel Vengeance, you know that you can't even bring anything in the line except maybe your cell phone. And then when you get up to the where you get ready to go up the steps onto the into the loading platform, they have a metal detector there. So that means your phone has to go into another locker. So you essentially are all you're going on the ride with is your clothes. That's it. And maybe glasses that have a strap. There's no hats, there's no bags, there's no nothing. Now, let's stop and talk about this for a minute. This goes back again to practicing yoga and the world around us and the awareness. Now, some may argue, and you can argue as much as you want, some may argue and say that some theme parks uh, are, are doing these, have these bag policies because they wanna make more money and force you to put things into a locker you have to pay for. Fine. Some may argue that they want to uh, make the efficiency of the rides faster. So they don't want you, you know, carrying a bag on. And then when you get up to the loading platform, you have to cross over and put your bag in. Then you're like, oh, what seat am I in? What row am I in? And I have to go back and I don't know where I'm at. And it slows down the overall. Some may argue that. But really, the decision from the theme parks comes down to one thing. Safety. Now, Yes, they probably do and you know have a little profit in mind. They're a business. Yes, they need to be operationally efficient. Yes, but there is a safety mechanism when it comes to rides. And as we evolve as, you know, humans and as our society evolves, technology evolves. More things we have on our person have evolved. And so some parks allow you to ride rides with those cross body bags, fanny packs on because they're completely strapped to you. And 
when we're talking about safety, backpacks and other bags may not be allowed on these attractions because they're high speed thrill rides. I mean, that's all there is to it. They're high speed thrill rides. So again, you might be able to put your bag into a bin. You might have to keep it off with a someone who's not riding. You might be not even allowed to bring it into the line and you might have to put it into a locker. Same goes with like cups or souvenir cups. That stuff generally can't ride with you. Sometimes it can, depending on the ride, but it all comes down to safety. Because if you drop anything that's in that bag or you take something out of that bag and you have it with you when you ride, or there's a bag with you when you ride, and it flies over somebody and you drop that bag, you're gonna hit somebody and it's going to create a big problem. You don't wanna be hit with, a, with an object while you're walking around a theme park having a good time. So we practice yoga and realize, hey, we're not the only people there. We are a community of people, so we need to abide by the particular rules because it is a safety mechanism for everyone involved, especially with the advent of phones uh, and other electronic devices that we carry around with us all the time. And I wanna talk about phones for a second. Phones are great to have when you're in line. They help you pass the time. That's great for technological advances to have the phone there. It helps keep you connected when you're waiting and you are you know, you have someone else in the park with you. Hey, I'm almost there. Hey, I'm here. Hey, I'm there. That's great. Phones are great to have. Phones are not great to have when you're riding. So if you are the person who wants to get your phone and start taking selfies while you're going up the lift hill or while you're riding and that phone slides out of your hand, it could potentially hit someone who's behind you or on the midways walking. And I don't really personally think that um, injuring another human being is worth me taking a picture of myself on a ride. That's number one. And number two, if you're worried about taking pictures or video of yourself or of the ride, you are not immersed in the experience because your attention is somewhere else. It's on the phone. It's on how am I gonna get the best shot? You're focusing on that and not the actual ride. So. Most parks say don't bring your phone on. Some may let you bring your phone on. And we're talking about high speed rides here. So realize that when it comes to phones too. Your phone really should be secured when you're riding just so you don't injure somebody. That's really all it's about. It's injury. You don't want an object flying at you, causing you harm that could last the rest of your life. It's possible. It has happened. It will happen again. So don't be the person that that creates that. So... You save your phone, save your pictures for your slower things like the train or maybe a monorail or, you know, any an observation tower, something that's slower that you have the time to just kind of take some nice scenic pictures of. But those roller coaster rides, I mean, yeah, we'd love to have the pictures of them. Then you need to buy the fun, the, the, the picture thing and have fun with those pictures all day long. So that way uh, you have a peace of mind that you've take, gotten pictures, which will cost you way less than it would if you injured somebody else with your phone. So uh, that's all I can say about phone. But when we're talking about um, that backpack or other bag, remember you might have to ditch it in a locker. You may put that that bag in a locker for the whole day. Uh, you may uh, leave it with someone who's not riding. Some people leave it in their cars and then they just go to their car and then they come back. That's up to you. You know, so really make sure you have some type of bag uh, that you can keep things in throughout your day that you need handy. So now what do you put in the bags? That's number two. So we talked about, all right, what's the deal with bags? why maybe we shouldn't bring them on rides and why we shouldn't bring objects on rides, what you could face with bag policies. Let's talk about what you put in the bags. Here are some essential things that you want to have with you in your uh, bag or in your your theme park, your, your crossbody bag or fanny pack for your theme park day. Number one, uh, in your bag specifically, a change of clothes. So this is especially true if you're going to be going to the water park that day. If you're splitting up your time for your theme park plus your water park, you want to have a change of clothes for your water park. Maybe your bathing suit is in there or maybe you're wearing clothes over top your bathing suit. But you might want to have dry clothes available uh, because not not just water park, but if you if it were to rain or storm or if you are going on a water ride where you get wet, you may want to change your clothes. No one likes walking around in, in shoes that are wet or in clothes that are wet or undergarments that are wet. So it's always nice to have a change of clothes with you when you're at your park. The same goes with, you know, 
an extra pair of prote- potentially of shoes if you are planning to get wet, or maybe you're going to bring flip flops uh, to wear uh, for your water park or for later on in the day or whatever it is. Um, even if you need to bring warmer clothes, for example, you might be going in the fall and it's warm during the day and then it gets cool at night. Uh, I remember when I, and I'm going to use Knott's Berry Farm as, as an example a couple times here. When I was at Knott's Berry Farm in November of last year of 2023, uh, I had a hoodie on in the morning and shorts and a t-shirt underneath it. And then I took the hoodie off and I had the hoodie like around my waist with me, but I had to put it back on later. So know that you know, when you're in those places like Southern California and it's wintertime and the nights are cool and the days are warm, you might need that. Or if it's fall and the days are hot and the nights get cool or there's a sudden change of temperature because there's a storm, you may need warmer clothing, uh, especially if those temperatures shift. Another thing to bring is rain gear. So you may want to have a poncho and bring a poncho from the dollar store, ladies and gentlemen, because if you buy a poncho from the theme park, you might be looking at double digit pricing, where if you go to the dollar store, you're probably only gonna spend a few bucks on it. So get your ponchos ahead of time or order them ahead of time from Amazon. Buying them at the theme park is really expensive. Uh, They're cute because they have the logo of the theme park, but I don't know. To me, that's not worth it because it's just, you're not wearing it around in your normal day. You're not wearing that around like you would a regular, you know, uh, souvenir uh, t-shirt or hoodie or something. So. I just suggest, you know, I'm all about spending money in the park, but I'm not about it with ponchos. So uh, get your ponchos ahead of time. Maybe a rain jacket, bring that, or an umbrella. But uh, that stuff's always good to have. Another one is a refillable water bottle. Now, again, check your park that you're going to. Check their policies. Most parks will let you bring in refillable water bottles as long as there's generally nothing in it when you go into the park. We're going to talk about when you arrive at the park in a little bit. But bring a refillable water bottle. You can refill water bottles up at some of these parks at Water Fountain. Some of them have refillable water stations. Some you can get them at the concession stands. Some will give you water and you can pour it in. So a refillable water bottle is nice if all you're going to drink is water. Um, make sure you have your medication with you and your you know, inhalers, things for your allergies, your EpiPens, whatever you need in case you have some sort of problem with bees or if you have a problem with another insect or pollen or other things that are in the air. The parks do a really nice job of keeping things very manicured, very as allergy you know, friendly as they can, but you know, you're outside. So make sure you have your stuff that you need for your allergies. Um, you also wanna have your sunblock or any type of, of, of lotions uh, that you put on your skin to protect you from the sun. Chapstick's another good one to have with you. Ziploc bags. Why do you need Ziploc bags? Well, if you have little kids, little ones with you, you may be bringing Ziploc bags because when you eat, you may put a few things in them and then you know, as you go later on, you may have that for another snack for your kids or even for yourself. Um, so Ziploc bags are nice to have and they work also for if you get wet or something gets wet and you can stick it in a little tiny Ziploc bag. Um, Band-Aids or other first aid items are nice to have. But also when it comes to first aid stuff, understand that most parks will help you at first aid if you were to get cut or you were scrape your knee or something like that happens. You can always go to first aid. Same goes with like your uh, your Medicaid, like over-the-counter medications. If you take an over-the-counter medication, you know, certainly bring it with you. But if you forget it, a lot of times first aid or even in the retail shops have that stuff for you. Um, and speaking of the little ones, when it comes to the Ziploc bags, you a lot of parks will let you bring food in with you as long as it's in small, tiny quantities like crackers or maybe some gummy bears or candy, hard candy, or um, maybe some cereal, some some bags of cereal for your kids, check your park policies because oh, most of them allow that stuff in. Uh, bottles, if you need them for your really little ones, bring that stuff in with you for your little ones so that they have it there. Um, and of course, anything else you need for your little ones, diapers and changing materials and clothes and blankets and anything else you need for those little ones, have that with you as you go. And then another thing you wanna have in your bag is a portable battery charger for your cell phone or other electronic devices. These are a huge deal now. You know, when I started going to theme parks years ago, when I was 10 years old, nine years old, we didn't have phones, so there was no need 
need to have your cell phone or have a worry about a battery or any of that. Now you're on your phone because you're using the park app. You're connecting with everybody else. You're posting on your social media, whatever you're doing, you're in line, you're looking at your phone, you're reading. You may want a portable battery charger so you don't lose your, pa- your, your battery and make sure that's uh, charged the night before your portable battery. Uh, make sure you have the correct charging cords with you too. You can fit small ones. I fit a real, I have a little tiny uh, one that's like a, it's like a little tiny square and it has a cord that comes out of it and it plugs right into my phone. I, I'm filming with my phone so I can't show it to you, but uh, it's tiny and you just plug it right into the phone. It's so uh, small that you hardly even, I can hold my phone and it's like I'm not even holding anything extra. So you may want that with you as well. It's so important to have that so you don't lose your battery before you get back to your car to to drive away. Now, uh, what about a Kindle? So I've seen many people bring Kindles or ebook readers uh, into the lines with them so they will read while they're in line. Um, you may also um, need to make sure you secure your keys in your backpack or your fanny pack when you arrive. You also want to have maybe a, a a spare set of contact lenses if you wear contact lenses. I have lost contact lenses in theme parks or water parks before. I bring my glasses when I go because in case there's a problem or my eyes get tired, I can always change them into glasses. So bring your your contact lenses or spares and maybe a little contact solution, tiny travel size. Just have that stuff ready for you. That way it's there. It's ready. You don't have to worry about it. And then again, uh, I talked about Ziploc bags for things, but also plastic bags like the ones you get from the grocery store. Those are nice to have when it comes to wet clothes and you want to put those in your backpack, but you don't want your wet clothes touching all your other stuff. Wrap them up in uh, plastic bags. Those are nice to have too. Or if you were to gather up some trash and you need to throw a bunch of trash away in the in the trash at the park, you can gather that up as well. So those are some really uh, things that I think are essential to bring with you when you go. Let's talk about what you're going to wear when you go. Well, you're going outside and for the majority of the attendance that comes from these theme parks, it comes from the summer months, so it's hot. Now, again, your weather, your, your wardrobe, rather, is going to depend on your weather. But we're, most of the time, for most of the attendance, it comes from the summer months. So make sure you have a comfortable T-shirt. Make sure it's breathable. The shirt I'm wearing now, if you're watching me on YouTube, this would be a shirt I would wear to, um, to the park because it's soft, it's breathable, and it's very comfortable. And when it gets wet, it doesn't shrink or get bigger. Um... You may also want to make sure you're wearing comfortable shorts. Sometimes I wear shorts like basketball, athletic shorts. Sometimes I wear cargo shorts. Um, I, when it comes to shoes, you may want to have those walking, comfortable walking tennis shoes or running shoes or whatever type of shoes that give you big support and your comfortable socks. Maybe you wear your hat with you for your sun protection. I also, as I mentioned before, when it comes to the temperature changes, I like to have a hoodie with me or a jacket just in case it rains or the weather changes suddenly or it gets colder suddenly. You may also wear jogging pants. Maybe you wear those or jeans if you like to wear those and the weather is sufficient for you. Um, You can even layer. You know, you can layer, as I mentioned about Knott's Berry Farm before. You can put on a hoodie over top, take it off, and now you have just a t-shirt on. Maybe it's two t-shirts. Dress depending on your weather and dress so that you can take things off rather than forgetting things that you don't have. Because again, if you need to go to the store and buy a hoodie, which I've had to do before, it is gonna run you a lot more money than it would run you if you just bring yours from home. So have enough that you can take things off rather than wishing you had them to put on. So that's a big thing when it comes to, you know, like what to wear. And then I wanna talk about your your feet and shoes. Flip-flops are extremely unhealthy for long periods of walking. And everybody loves wearing flip-flops. I love wearing flip-flops too. They're 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 comfortable. Your feet don't get warm. It's very freeing. But your body needs support when you're walking in the theme parks. So I like to have flip-flops with me and I change into them if I'm going to the water park because you're not doing as much walking and you can slip in and out of them to go on the rides or go in the water. And the same goes with when you want to go on water rides because then your shoes don't get wet. So you may want to have flip-flops available to just change into and change out of. 
so that your feet are dry. You want to keep your feet dry during the day because they it helps your stability. It helps the core. It helps your body, your hips, your shoulders, your knees, your ankles. All of those things need support while you're walking. So the flip-flops don't always provide that kind of support. So I don't recommend wearing them all day. People wear them all day. That's your body, your choice. I feel that it is a... And it does. It, it is a detriment. It's I mean, that's that's researched out there. They don't always give you the same support as as, you know, comfortable walking shoes do. So just a note on that as well when you're choosing your footwear for the day. All right. Now let's talk about what happens when you get to the park. Number four, arriving to the park. If you are going to be spending the day one full day at the park and you want to get the most in my recommendation is to arrive at the park's parking lot at least 45 minutes to one hour before the park opening time. So that means if the park opens at 9 a.m., you need to be in the parking lot by 8 or 8.15 a.m. at the latest. Because when you get into the parking lot, you are going to have to get all your stuff out of the car. You're going to have to Make sure you have everything ready to go and you're going to be walking to the gate or taking a shuttle or a tram. So be sure that you are getting to the park on time. If you are staying somewhere where there is transportation, the same rules apply. 45 minutes to one hour before. Check with your park to see when the parking lot opens or when you can arrive there. The next thing is a lot of parks, and we're not talking about early entry yet. So early entry is a whole different topic, which I'll talk about in a minute. But we're talking just about just a regular day in the park without any kind of early entry. Most parks open their gates so you can actually scan your tickets and go through the gate. They open it maybe 15 to 30 minutes, sometimes 45 minutes before the posted time. So again, 9 o'clock. They may open the gates at 8.30. That's why if you're in the parking lot at 8 o'clock, you are going to be able to get into the park at maybe 8.30 and be ready to go by nine o'clock when the actual rope drops. And we're, that's what they call that in the theme park industry, rope drop. So you might rope drop a, an attraction you like, or you might be there for the rope drop. That's what that's called. So if you want that, you know, you want to get in what you can get in, or you have something you want to ride in the morning before the big crowds get there, make sure you're in that parking lot you know 45 minutes to an hour before and you're and you're and you're arriving to the gate at the time that that gate starts to open because then what it generally happens is you'll go in so far and then there'll be that rope and once that rope goes down usually at the opening of park people will start running and going out so you want to be ready to go that's when the least amount of people generally are available that very first within that first hour to 2 hours like from nine o'clock to 11 o'clock if the park opens, people are flooding in to the parking lot and through the gates and just flooding in, flooding in. If you're already there, you're gonna get a little bit of a jump start. And we're gonna talk more about how to navigate your way through in just a moment as well. The other thing to make sure you're doing is to check your tickets or your passes uh, so that you are ready to go before you get to the gate. Have your phone ready if your tickets are on your phone. Have them printed out. Have everyone's tickets ready because if you get to the gate and you hold everybody else up because you're not prepared, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna create a little bit of a chain reaction. We wanna be mindful of this stuff because there are a lot of us going to a park in one day. So just make sure you have it ready to go. You don't wanna walk aimlessly around without purpose. Because when you do that, it leads to stress. The same rules apply when it goes to the theme park in that your everyday life. If you're walking aimlessly out through your life, not prepared or not with a clear purpose, then you're going to have anxiety and you're going to be stressed and you're going to be fearful and you're going to procrastinate. And you're going to have excuses. The same goes there. So have your tickets ready. Have your passes ready. Whatever it is that you have, have it ready so when you get to the parking toll, when you get to the gate, you scan and you go. Most The technology now is so different than it used to be. We don't really hold paper tickets as much anymore. So have all that stuff ready to go. Most of the time, if you've gotten your stuff before, it's going to be all on your phone or your watch. Now, if you're dealing with early park entry, let's talk about that. If you're dealing with early park entry, you then 
might be able to skip through that last scenario I just described where you're getting to the parking lot at a certain time and then you're getting to the gate at a certain time. Early park entry might be 8.30, which means if you get to the gate at 8.30, there might be a special line you go through and you show your pass or you show your ticket or your tour ticket or your VIP ticket. They scan it and now you go. And there may be select rides or attractions that are open for early entry. So know that if you have your early entry and utilize it because if you utilize your early entry, you are going to be a little bit ahead of where everybody else goes and then you might have the time to get to what you want to get to first and then start to just slow down and move about your day through the rest of the day. So the other thing that's really nice about when you get to the park that you can do now is using air tags where you park your car because there's a couple things you can do with parking. One of them is using the air tag. You can leave an air tag like you would in your suitcase, leave it in your car so that way you remember where you parked it. That's number one. Another trick to that is taking a picture or video of where your car is parked compared to where the walkway of the parking lot is. These parking lots at these parks are so big that just remembering, you know, A16, you may forget that 12 hours later. So, take a picture or video and another thing you could do is check on the parks app and see if they have a car locator because many times you can drop a pin and then you can you know walk your way back to your car we have the technology use the technology now let's talk next about the security in your parks the security screening checkpoints are there now for most parks. Uh, it's sort of like you do you go through security at an airport, but it's not that whole TSA, take your shoes off, put things in bins stuff. This is more of a, you're going through a full body scanner and it scans for any kind of weapons or any other prohibited items. So, and it will scan your bag. If you have a backpack, you're gonna a lot of times walk right through with that backpack and if it goes off, you may be subject to a bag search. And that's not to say you're doing anything wrong, but it could sense something and it's, and then they're gonna check in your bag. And again, that's for your security and for everyone else's security. So check your park's website on the things that are allowed in and the things that are not allowed in because you will go through a security checkpoint. Also check your park's smoking policy upon arrival. If you are a smoker or a vapor, you may not be able to smoke or vape in the open. In fact, most parks don't allow that anymore. Uh, you may have to uh, smoke in a designated area or even on the outside of the gates. So check those policies as well. All right, now let's talk about our final our final category, and that's the fifth one, the tips for the day. So you are, now you're in, right? Or you're, you're, you're in the park and you're ready to roll. So what are some tips and tricks for a great successful day? Well, first of all, if you have not pre-booked or pre-purchased drink plans, food plans, fast passes, um, whatever it is, tours, be sure you do that right away because a lot of that stuff sells out. Uh, I recommend doing all that ahead of time online, but if you don't have time or you got to the park and you forgot or whatever, be sure you do that right away when you get in there so that you don't risk sellouts of that. Now, if you have a plan of attack, I wanna talk to you about that for a second. I've been going to theme parks for a long time and I have found that when you plan a whole day out, like, okay, we're gonna go here, then we're gonna go here, then we're gonna go here, then we're gonna do this, then we're gonna go here, then we're gonna see that, then we're gonna go da 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 Generally, that doesn't work. Why? Because there's a lot of factors involved with how your day is going to play out when you are at an outdoor uh, entertainment venue that has a lot of variables. So number one, the weather could change things. Ride downtime could change things. Line Length of lines can change things. The way that the crowd is moving through the park can change things. When you're eating, the availability of food places and the times that it opens, the times that the ride opens, rides open, times that shows are, that stuff changes. And it sometimes changes on a moment's notice. Um, I think it's great to have a general idea of what you want to do, but not so specific. So here's my tip. Really think about like what you really want to do. What are like your top five things? that you want to do for the day. I mean, you can make it seven things. You can make it three things. What is the top, what are the top five things? We'll just use five as a, 
you know, kind of a, a, a round number there. What do you want to do with what are those five things that you want to do? Like you must do those. You're not leaving unless you do those. That's what I would base your day around. Getting those five, seven, three, four things in that you really want to do. Okay. Because what ends up happening is if you miss some other things, you're going to leave feeling like you've really gotten out of it what you wanted to get out of it. And you're paying a lot of money to do it. So really get out of it what you want to get out of it. Not not forcing something, but get out of it what you want to get out of it. You know, for me, when I go to certain places, I know I have a certain uh, you know, ride that I want to ride, or I have a show I want to see, or I want to try this restaurant. That's on my must do. If I miss something else, it's not the end of the world for me. I can try it again next time. But make a list. What are the things you and your family, or you and your friends, or just you want to do specifically? Instead of we're going to go here, then we're going to go here. And again, it's a, it's great to have a general idea. Like, okay, so um, you know, I I want to kind of go this way, and then I want to go that way, and I'll work my way to the back, then I'll work my way to the front. That's fine. But but be sure that you know exactly what you want to do. It really avoids a lot of frustration. When I, again, I'll bring up Knott's Berry Farm. I did not do this when I went to Knott's Berry Farm last year, and I regret that because there were there were at least two or three things that I had on my list, and I would be like, mm, and I would look at it, and I'd be like, oh, I'll come back, and then I would like divert myself to some other place or get caught up in something else, and then I left, and I never got to do those few things. Now, I did do some amazing things, but I would have taken some of the things I wanted to do over the things that I did do because I was trying to formulate this like plan that doesn't work, right? And a lot of, and then there, it was so crowded that it interrupted what I was trying to do. And then I wasn't able to get on these one. And then there was one ride there that went down. So, and I wanted to ride it, but I didn't go on it earlier in the day because I was wasting time on other stuff. So like really think about it. What, if I could give you any advice, that would be the biggest one. What literally do you really want to get on? If it's a new ride for the year, like for example, Cedar Point is opening Top Thrill 2. It's going to be huge in 2024. If that's why you're going, then make sure you get there. You get in that line and you wait. You're going to wait in line. So just be aware that's your goal. And then the rest comes after, right? So Really fill in the rest as you go. Another tip, be sure you're eating and drinking. Don't put off eating and drinking. Okay, it's so important. You are on your feet all day long. You need to have fuel for your long park days. I'm not gonna tell you what to eat. That's up to you and your body and your decisions. But make sure you stay fueled. But you do need to make sure you're drinking plenty of water for sure because you wanna stay hydrated. Uh, And then get your lunch, get your dinner in, eat your breakfast in the morning, have snacks if you need to. Be sure you're fueling your body because you are extremely active in a theme park. You're doing steps. You're doing, and I don't mean just steps like walking. You're going up and down steps sometimes. Ramps, corners, hills, walkways, signs. Where do where is this at? Where is that at? Where is the bathroom at? You're on your phone. You're off your phone. You're putting your bag here. You're looking at this. You're doing that. So you're using a lot of energy. Eat and drink through your day. Be sure you get your hydration in there. Be sure you eat. It's very important. And also take breaks and give your kids the room to have meltdowns if needed. Now, I am not a parent, so I am not skilled at, you know, I don't don't have any experience with that, but here's what I will say from what I've experienced in my years of going to theme parks. I have seen parents try to force their kids to go on rides that they don't want to ride. I have seen parents grabbing and yanking kids into lines, and then they have these big meltdowns. I have seen kids screaming and hollering in the middle of a midway. I've seen adults screaming and hollering in the middle of midways, having temper tantrums too, as a grown adults. Emotions can run high, especially if you have expectations. That's why I suggest those top things only so that you can just kind of flow the rest of your day, especially with kids. Let your kids kind of dictate, do they want to go on something or don't they want to go on something? And take your kids away for a small break if you need to, a quiet area, somewhere where there's shade, just to regroup. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Forcing them to go through things just because you spent money is going to turn into a lot of turmoil. I've seen it so many times. And when I was a kid, that's the way it operated with me. I was I was forced to do things I never wanted to do when I was at theme parks, or I was made to feel bad 
for not doing something or for doing something I wanted to do. You don't want to do that to your kids. Your kids are trying to have fun and it's, it's just not conducive to the whole atmosphere when you're forcing them to do things. So again, not a parent, but just telling you, this is what I've observed from many years, many days in theme parks, many hours being spent, many things I've seen, many, many, many. So take breaks and you need them for yourself too, not just for your kids. You need breaks for yourself. Let yourself be authentically you. Let your kids be authentically them. Uh, here's another one that just kind of, I just want to put out there because it's kind of obnoxious and it's not uh, a good way to honor other people. When you're waiting in line, give people space in front of you and behind you. So don't try to like ride up on someone behind them and put your body, like give them a little space. The lines are big enough, the queue lines. You don't need to be right in, right on someone Okay, give them a little space and stay off those handrails. Because if you're on those handrails, do you know how many times I've seen people fall? When someone falls off of a handrail in a line, it can create a lot of problems and it creates a shutdown. So please don't do that. Just kind of like be aware of where you are and have a good time while you're in line, but not at the expense of detaining everybody else's days or making everybody else miserable, right? Be aware that there are other people there, not just you. That's part of practicing yoga. And here's another thing. Go see the shows. Go see the nighttime spectaculars and get to those shows early so that you have the best seating. Same goes for like if there's parades. You really want to be there early having, you know, and sit down, get comfortable, have enough space for yourself and your family so that you are you know, not struggling for those last minute seats or you have to stand. All right, so get to those shows early. And by the way, the live entertainment and theme parks is really, really cool. So be sure you see live entertainment if you have not done so in your theme park days in the past. Uh, take a lot of pictures, take in the scenery, do some people watching and go to the water park. If, you're, if, you, uh, if your water park is included or if you have a separate ticket and you can go over to it, go enjoy the water park, relax by the pool. Sit down under the shade or just get some sun or float along in the lazy river. Balance out your day. And that's the final thing I want to talk about is know when enough is enough. Know when you have, it's time for that balance. Maybe it's time you stop and go in to do a little window shopping in the in the air conditioning. Maybe that's when you go to see a show. Maybe that's when you find your shade. Maybe that's when you go to the water park. Those Think about those top things you want to do and the rest, let yourself balance. Because when you do that, you are going to feel like you have spent your money wisely and you're going to feel like it was worth it for you through the whole day because you spent your money wisely and you got out of it and you don't, and you got out, well, what you want to get out of it and you don't get out of it with anger and rage and, well, we should have done this and we should have done that and arguing about who did this and who did that. You don't want any of that. You want to have a good time. So balance yourself. Know when enough is enough. Even as fun as the parks can be, know when it's time to go. If you intend to stay there till closing time, whether it's 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, midnight, that's great. But just know something else could have its way, whether it's your body, whether it's the weather, whether it's the rides, whether it's anything. Be open to that and understand that enough could be enough and you can go again when you're ready to go back, whether it's the next day or your next trip. But just know that these park trips are what you make of them. They're not what others make of them. They're what you make of them. And it's it's a way to balance out how you control your, your own self in the midst of tens of thousands of people in one location. And there is so much fun you can have if you just let Go. And trust me, I've learned this. When you go, let go. Enjoy it. Watch the rides go by if you're not a rider. Sit on the carousel horse and ride up and down, round and round. Ride the train, right? Have the ice cream. Go on the observation tower and look out for miles. Listen, the park day is what you make of it. And be okay with what you make of it because you deserve it. You deserve to have that day because you spent the money, you worked hard, and now you're here. You've done the preparation, so make it as stress-free as possible. I hope all of these tips have helped you. I hope 
that if you have a story or you have a a comment about something that makes your theme park day better, that you share it. Because the more we share, the more uh, we become, we we come together. And we, we want to come together and have a lot of fun at these places and not have lots of turmoil and stress and anxiety. That's not what they're for. They're for joy and happiness. So go out there and enjoy yourselves this summer. We're going to be back with more episodes on some other traveling things and and some other surprises when it comes to theme parks. So I hope you have a great time this summer and I hope you plan a great trip and you have fun with yourself, your family, your loved ones, because you deserve all that. So until the next episode of this podcast, go have fun, go start planning, and then I'll see you very soon.